Mika Hakkinen had to wait a long time to truly make his mark in Formula 1. Having made his debut with Lotus in 1991, he took his first win with McLaren at the end of 1997 and followed it up with back-to-back -back world championships in the next two seasons. But from the 95 races before he became a Grand Prix winner, his biggest impact was on his first start for McLaren when he managed to upset none other than Ayrton Senna. Hakkinen started 1993 on the sidelines. He was signed up by McLaren after two years at Lotus, but he was only going to get a race seat if Senna decided not to contest the season. When Senna signed up for a lucrative race-by-race -race deal with McLaren, Hakkinen was made test driver, although he was promised a chance to race for the team at some point during the year. McLaren's patience with IndyCar convert Michael Andretti eventually ran out, and Hakkinen was called up for the final three races of the season. By this point, any hopes Senna had of winning a fourth world championship with McLaren had evaporated. Alain Prost would go on to seal the title with Williams that weekend, and on the Friday, Senna had announced he was leaving McLaren. Perhaps that played into Hakkinen's hands, as he was a much-needed shot in the arm for the team and its star driver that had spent the season trying to keep pace with the dominant Williams package. Reflecting all these years later, Hakkinen believes Senna had high hopes after testing the MP48 in pre-season, but those ambitions were shattered when it became clear just how far ahead the Prost-Williams combination was. To put those numbers on the screen into perspective, the gap between Williams and McLaren is the same as the gap between Mercedes and the fifth fastest car in 2019, and people say modern F1 isn't competitive enough. Senna used all of his skill and experience to pluck three victories from the first six races of the year, but by the time the F1 circus arrived in Portugal in late September, he'd gone from leading the championship to trailing both Williams drivers. By this point, Hakkinen didn't think Senna was maximising his performance, but he went into the weekend knowing the Brazilian felt he was a threat because Senna was not offering him any help as he prepared to race a McLaren for the first time. The relationship that Hakkinen described as cold didn't get any warmer after qualifying when the young charger out-qualified the three-time world champion. Senna wasn't happy, and Hakkinen didn't help matters by constantly winding him up, trying to engage him in conversation about the qualifying result when Senna clearly had no interest. Senna was particularly miffed by data showing he was four kilometers per hour slower than Hakkinen through Estoril's daunting first corner, with Hakkinen offering a theory that Senna needed bigger balls to make up the difference. Hakkinen reckons his performance gave Senna the kick he needed to re-engage in the 93 season, and after just a few corners of the race, Senna had put some manners on his new teammate with a bold pass at the end of the back straight. Hakkinen is quick to point out they were running different engine specs that weekend, so there was little point in him trying to race Senna, although ultimately they both retired. Senna's engine failed, and Hakkinen crashed out at the high-speed final corner. Team boss Ron Dennis was sympathetic to Hakkinen, telling him not to worry. He had high hopes for their partnership, and Hakkinen would of course be the man to bring World Championship glory back to McLaren later that decade. As for 1993, Portugal did serve as a wake-up call to Senna, who won the final two races of the season. Hakkinen could immediately see a difference in Senna, saying he woke up in a big way, working hard with his engineers to get everything they could out of the McLaren Ford package. At this point, Hakkinen learned, to use his own words, just how amateur he was and what set the greats like Senna apart from the rest. He realised how closely Senna worked with his chief engineer, data engineer and number one mechanic, and how as a group they focused on areas of the car that would offer the biggest rewards. Senna was willing to compromise certain corners where the losses wouldn't be so big, or as Hakkinen put it, the corners where his driving talent could fix it. He also described Senna's ability to memorise information as fantastic. In the days before data of every tiny detail about the car was readily available, Senna would reel off key details from memory. Hakkinen lacked the capacity to remember as much detail, and he admits he would often get confused when he tried to. But seeing Senna at such close quarters that season also gave Hakkinen an insight into how McLaren's dip in form affected the way the Brazilian worked with the team before that late season wake-up call. After years of race wins and championships, a second season of losing out to Williams took its toll on Senna and affected his demeanour around the team. Hakkinen noticed how important it was for a driver to motivate the team and take care of his engineers and mechanics when times are tough. He says it was important to realise that the rest of the team felt as bad as the drivers when things weren't going well, and it was up to the driver to remain a team player. He felt Senna didn't always offer McLaren's crew members the level of support he should have that season. 
That lesson was good preparation for Hakkinen, who was about to become team leader at McLaren as it began a winless streak that would stretch to the start of 1997. He briefly got to see another world champion up close when Nigel Mansell passed through McLaren's doors at 1995. There's no question the MP410 was a poor car at that stage, but Hakkinen took great satisfaction from being faster than Mansell, who he said was nearly crying next to him in the debriefs. Hakkinen's early years at McLaren were tough, but in 1998 he delivered on his early promise to become the team's first world champion since Senna.